Good morning and welcome to Missoula Real Estate Today. This is Denny Bedard. Missoula Real Estate Today is presented by Diane Beck of Windermere Real Estate. Diane's been working with buyers and sellers in the Missoula market for over 25 years and shares her insights on the local housing market. Along with her trusted partners, Diane provides complete service for your real estate transaction and brings us guests who provide useful information on industry-related topics and trends. And now, Missoula Real Estate Today on News Talk KGVO. And welcome to the first Missoula Real Estate today for 2019. We hope you had a wonderful New Year's. Uh, Diane Beck must still be, well, celebrating uh, New Year's. She couldn't be here on her show today, but she's uh, provided us with a couple of wonderful guests to kick off the new year. We have Justin Montelius and Erica Close with Payne West Insurance. Uh, welcome you both to the show. Justin, we might as well start with you. Uh, what is uh, your background? What led you to Payne West Insurance? Yeah. Um, so what led me to Payne West Insurance is uh, my dad's been in the business for about 30 years. So I grew up around um, the business. Um, you know, I saw it was a good career and something that, you know, I can make for my own. Um, so been there about three and a half years now. Um, I really enjoy what I do. We have a great team there. Yeah. I was going to ask you, what all do you like about Payne West? I think you've kind of got started on that, but I'll let you elaborate on that a little bit. Yeah. Um, I just like the ability that we get to work with others. Um, every day there's a new problem to solve. Um, there's some oddball thing that someone's buying that we have to try to figure out how to cover. <laughs> um, I mean, I could go on and on about <laughs> the stuff that people buy and try to get coverage for, but I think that yeah. you could probably <laughs> figure it out yourself. Well, maybe we can come up with a, an oddball solution or two today during this program. Erica Close, I'll move it on over to you. Uh, your background, what what led you to Payne West Insurance? Good morning. I've been with Payne West Insurance just about eight years, and before mm -hmm. that, I was a realtor. Uh -huh. um, I don't know. I guess I, I like homes. It flows together. Okay. And since it is Diane Beck of Windermere Real Estate's program, that's has something to do with your relationship with Diane, right? Yes. For a brief period of time, I was a buyer's agent with Diane Beck. All right. And uh, Justin, how about you? How did you get acquainted with Diane Beck? Or are you just kind of along with, with Erica there? Um, I just got to know Diane Beck just through community events. Um, sure. My mom and her are good friends, so I always see her out and about. And it's always you know, a friendly hi at a concert yeah. or uh, you know having a cocktail. Yeah. <laughs> She's very... Uh, very community involved. Well, let's uh, let's get to what we're here for, and that's to talk insurance, uh, and in some cases, maybe uh, the whole program, related to uh, how that applies to someone who's looking to buy a home. And Erica, I guess it's kind of one of those things where, well, you got the home, you got to have the insurance, right? So, but it's far, far from a cookie cutter kind of thing, isn't it? Yes, definitely. And if you're paying cash for your home, you may choose not to insure the home. But if you're getting a loan for the home, the bank is going to require you to cover the structure to protect their investment. I'll bet you an insurance person would not recommend whether they uh, buy it outright or not, not to have insurance, would they? You know, it, it's not our choice. Sometimes people have the finances and the resources to choose to cover their liability and not the structure itself. Okay. Justin, how about you? Uh, Erica brought up uh, liability. Let's talk a little bit about homeowner liability to get that that started on. And is is that kind of a, you'll have to lead me by the, the hand here, not to sound naive, but is, is that kind of a, a foundation policy? Is that sort of where we start? Um, you know, it's something that's built into every policy. Um, there's minimum limits and then there's higher limits to go from there. Um, so typically on, you know, a normal home that's around town, we recommend anywhere from three to 500,000 in liability. And what that liability is going to cover is someone coming onto your property and, you know, getting hurt. It could be you didn't shovel your sidewalk. They slip and fell and hit their head. Um, it could be, you know, your dog that goes after the mailman and bites him. Um, so liability is going to protect you if, you know, if anyone comes onto your property and gets hurt and you're deemed at fault. So it, that's a pretty broad umbrella then. When you say liability, you're, you're talking about a lot of coverage, but are you talking about enough coverage depending on the situation what happens erica what do you think well you, you'd want to look at that and that's why everyone's individual we're all protecting different assets but um liability is very broad and it's people don't realize how much liability comes with a homeowner's policy and what it might cover um like justin said somebody getting hurt at your house um even going back to having a cocktail with somebody at your home if they slipped in hurt their ankle and had to go to the doctor or if they were hurt or worse than that. Something else you don't think about is a lot of homeowners policies cover 
Something in insurance terms is called personal offense, and that is coverage for libel or slander. So let's say you got a little lippy on Facebook and somebody's suing you over it. There's a chance your homeowner's liability would respond and help you pay damages that you were found to be legally responsible for. And I would imagine you get when you're explaining some of that to uh, to potential policy holders, some of that uh, running through the back of their minds, Justin, as well. That's kind of silly, but my goodness, we are in a pretty litigious society, aren't we? Yeah, we are. We are in a very, very digital world. Um, <laughs> you know, most people don't sit down and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation anymore. They're, you know, sitting down for lunch and they're both on their cell phones at the same time. So if they're, you know, on Facebook bashing someone or, um, you know, saying offensive things, you know, those are all liabil p potential liability issues that could arise. Um, so, you you know, liability is a very, very broad term. And, you know, as the times change, it's becoming even more broad. So, you know, going back to the libel and slander, those are two huge um, aspects of what, you know, liability might cover. Sure. Does the the price of the home that you purchase, let's say we, we purchase a home for, throw out about a ballpark figure that's probably fairly close to average in Missoula right now. You purchase a $300,000 home, Erica. And you're going over the, the various elements of a liability policy. Price of a house have, have any or all bearing on that? Yes and no. Um, what insurance is covering is the structure. So if that home was on 10 acres, the price of the home when we did the cost guide might come in at 210000 though your purchase price is 300000 Another example is if we do a cost guide and you got one heck of a good deal for some reason and the value to rebuild that home with like kind and quality is 410,000 but you're buying the home for 300,000. So it impacts it because we still have to make sure we're looking at the bigger picture, but ultimately the insurance policy covers the house, the other structures, the liability, the stuff and somewhere else to live if something happened to your home. Okay, so while, while we're on that topic then, what, what do you like to do to make sure that customers get, get the right policy for them? We will look at pictures online, but we'll okay. also have a conversation with customers. And um, you don't think about it, but things like hobbies, if you collect guns, we might want to have special coverage for that. Or if you have a lot of jewelry or art, we might want special coverage for that. Um, maybe you run a business in your home and we should be looking at your policy a little differently. So a conversation with the client and having an agent you can talk to is, is huge. You really have to contour to, to each and every homeowner's needs, don't you? Yes. It can start pretty basic, but to actually make it respond and be what a client needs it to be, you have to ask some questions. My guests are Erica Close and Justin Montelius from Payne West Insurance here on Missoula Real Estate Today. And uh, Justin, I'll let you kind of uh, pick it up where, where Erica left off there. Some examples of, of how you go about, she talked about a little bit, but some other examples you brought up before we, we went on the air here about, you know, trying, trying to find out what is the right policy for each potential policy holder. Yeah. So to elaborate on what Erica said, um, to find the right policy, you know, we're going to look at, you know, what type of home is it? Is it a manufactured home? Is it a stick built home? Is it a log home? Mm -hmm. um, is the home in the city? Is it on the you know, outskirts or is it remote? You know, people don't realize it, but there, you know, there's a lot of people that buy second homes that are extremely remote, you know, 15 to 20 miles from the fire department, uh, unpaved roads. So really it's, you know, it's having that conversation, um, sitting down with them and, you know, talking them through um, why this specific carrier is going to be better than this one and um, what this policy covers where this one doesn't. Sure. Besides price, I'm sure, Erica, but what are what are things that you typically run into in terms of um, what are some of your customers' major concerns about having the right policy? Um, kind of stepping back, homeowners insurance started as fire insurance. It started back in England. And so fire is almost, is a covered peril on homeowners policies. I bet once a week somebody calls and asks us, Was, is my home covered if there's a wildfire? Mm -hmm. So it's a huge concern for people. Yeah, That so, would probably be the number one question we're hearing over the last three years. Is yeah. my home covered for wildfire? Yeah. And, and I imagine uh, based on, on uh, what happened last year with some of the flooding situations around Missoula, that's, you're probably, 
you know, seeing a little bit more or hearing a little bit more of that too, I would assume, huh? Yeah, we definitely are. Um, the conversation of flood came up uh, left and right last year. Um, what most people don't realize is that on a normal homeowner's policy, even if you have water coverage, you know, water backup coverage, flood coverage is not included. It's a completely separate policy from the homeowner's policy. And what's considered flood is any type of groundwater that enters the house from the outside. Um, whereas if you had, you know, let's say water backup coverage on your homeowner's policy, that would cover, you know, a pipe leaks, um, the, in the, you come home and the basement has an inch of water in it. So can I go about attaching a, a rider to that? Because now, now I'm a little bit nervous. I'm thinking, okay, you know, there's there, there's different definitions of water in my house. Um, so so I'm – and I know that if, if oh, I think it's going to flood uh, on uh, – here it is the weekend. I think it might flood by Wednesday. I guess I'll buy some. doesn't work that way, does it? No, a flood policy needs to be in effect more than 30 days right. before a claim can be filed. And flood is a separate policy, except for on some manufactured homes, we can endorse it. But on anything else that we work with, it is a separate policy. So uh, take your customers by the hand, and you you probably bring that up uh, in many cases before they bring it up, I would assume, because you know that that's, at least in some areas, I mean, not, not in all areas of, of this town or any town, but it's going to come up, especially after what happened last spring, last summer. And so is that something you try to introduce into the conversation just to make sure everybody understands? Yeah, we definitely do. Um, you know, and like you said, it depends on where they live. And if they are buying a new home um, and they're, they're financing it, if they're in a floodplain, the flood insurance is going to be bank required. So they're going to know that they need it most times before. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I mean, everyone is can have flood. Because look at Colorado, about four years ago, mountain towns were flooding from groundwater. So any home can flood. Um, so it's always a conversation that comes up, along with earthquake. Earthquake is not usually covered on a homeowner's policy. It can be endorsed and added, though. Okay. And, and how is that approached? Uh, how does that differ from some form of structural damage? How do you approach that? Just, Erica, you want to take that one? Earth movement. It. <laughs> Um, yeah, a lot of times mudslide fa falls right. in there too, but earth movement is not a covered peril usually. Okay. All right. Our guests are Justin Montelius and Erica Close with Payne West Insurance here on uh, uh, Missoula Real Estate Today. And Justin, I guess I'll start with you. Haven't talked too much yet specifically about Payne West Insurance and uh, their versatility and and what all Payne West provides and you as a, as a catalyst for that, what all you provide individually? Yeah, so individually, both Eric and I are in the personal lines department. So we can do anything in your personal name. So, you know, home, auto, um, we do do some life insurance, um, any recreational vehicles you might have. Uh, Payne West as a whole is a full service agency. So we do everything from large commercial to small commercial um, benefits and surety. Um, Payne West merged, what, about five, six years ago? Um, what used to be Western States Insurance and Payne Financial. And so they merged. And I think now we have, what, about 30 offices in four different states. Wow. Very good. Over 700 employees. And we are licensed in all 50 states. So we can help with insurance in other states, too. Can you explain, uh, Eric, I'll start with you. Uh, can you explain, <clears throat> there, there's the term, of course, broker, independent agent, things like that. Can you kind of clarify what, what all... You are as a representative of Payne West. Yes. So we're an independent agent. And what that means is we're appointed with different companies. Um, and so we can write policies that fit underwriting guidelines with those companies for any of our clients. Where if I was a captive agent, like a state farm agent, I only write state farm policies. We work with about 10 companies primarily for homeowners insurance, though we have other markets when somebody is buying a remote home or a yurt. Um, we do and write insurance for yurts. So, um, and then Payne West as an independent agent, it depends on what state you are in. In Idaho, we'd call us ourselves a broker. Mm -hmm. Here we're independent agents. It just means we don't work for those insurance companies. We work for our clients, but still represent the interests of those companies. So you've been in, you said about six or seven years, you got a lot of yurts on your resume to this point? Yes. <laughs> Strangely <laughs> enough, there's a tell, yurt manufacturer in Montana, so we write a lot of yurts. 
Yeah, tell tell me about one. I mean, what what is involved? Uh, just just for the fun of it, what what all is involved in writing up a policy for your insurance? Is it is it pretty much a home, just with um, uh, you know, obviously a different structure to it and. Uh, a slightly less permanent structure, but a yurt right. can be very expensive. You could have a hundred thousand dollar yurt, and we have several in different states for second homes and primary homes. Um, some even have plumbing. Very good. All right. Anybody out there with a yurt? Now you know where to uh, where to go. You got to go see Payne West for that. Let me ask you, uh, Justin. I'll start with you. Let me let me ask you about um, the other end of this. I'm a, I'm a homeowner. I, I buy a policy, and I'm working with Payne West, and something, God forbid, catastrophic happens to my house uh hopefully there's there's no uh life-threatening injuries or anything like that but something really bad has happened to my house and that's such a, a sad stressful agonizing thing so now you step in now you have to kind of step in and uh you you have to work with that emotional end of the customer clerk clientele process if you will what is that like you know it, it's it's never easy you know there's there's mixed emotions, there's feelings that get involved. Um, you know, a lot of times there's sentimental property that's lost too. And that's the hardest thing probably for people to overcome. Mm -hmm. um, but we are there for the clients. Um, so we're going to do anything that we can to advocate for them and to, you know, in indemnify them or make them whole after the claims process. So, um, and what in indemnify means is, you know, to make them whole. So it's not to it's to put them back to where they originally were, not to get them ahead and not to have them behind, but to sure. um, get them there. So, and a benefit of Payne West Insurance is that we do have our own in-house claims team. So if a claim does go a little um, haywire, we do have, uh, you know, four or five experts in our office that uh, that's all they do. So they're going to, you know, get involved. They're going to read the policies. They're going to, you know, find any loopholes we can to make sure that if it's something that should be paid, it's going to get paid. Wow. That is excellent. Erica, uh, same thing. You um, you probably, when you as much as you can, develop a, well a little bit of a relationship with uh, with your customers. And not saying that that makes something like that easier, but it, it probably helps. Uh, should a, a claim have to be filed because of, uh, of some disaster or emergency or whatever, it, it probably helps to to build a little bit of a relationship with your customers. Yes, it goes back to communication. Um, you want an agent you can talk to, but we have a fire claim right now in Hamilton mm. that our claims team is involved in, and it's not because coverage has been denied or it went sideways. It's just a very large process and a very emotional process. And um, one of our claims advocates has been working with this client for months now just to kind of explain what's going to happen next and explain it in legal terms so that when the claims adjuster talks to them, they understand what's going on. Um, and like Justin said, the sentimental value, insurance sure. replaces monetary. It makes you whole, but it, it can't bring back grandma's dishes. Right. Yeah. yeah. Missoula Real Estate Today with uh, Justin Montelius and Erica Close from Payne West Insurance. I'd like to thank Diane Beck from Windermere Real Estate who provides the program and uh, – uh, furnished us with our guests this morning here on Missoula Real Estate Today. We were talking about this a little bit as far as finding the right policy. You mentioned customer concerns. Well, fire, obviously. That's a that's a big concern and and uh, potential flood damage. You brought up earthquakes, things like that. There's probably some, I don't, I don't want to say quirky, there, there's probably some rather un unique uh, individual type questions that... Uh, uh, apply to a, a very, very narrow group of homeowners. Do I have that right? Some some examples of that that you might be able to think of? Um, you know, just, I guess examples would be, um, you know, a lot of carriers don't want to write manufactured homes. A lot of carriers don't want to write log homes. Um, you know, manufacture, it's hard to, you know, come up with a value on them. And log homes are so expensive to rebuild. Um, so it's, you know, when we do run into those situations, we actually, we do have carriers that we can write with. So I'd say that those are kind of unique examples Whereas, you know, um, you know, certain companies just, they draw the line and you can't go past that line. The answer is absolutely not. Hmm. Um, I, you know, I'm sure there's a hundred quirky things <laughs> that we could probably think of. I can't think of any off the top of my head right now. Um, they do come up probably every other day. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's okay. I was just kind of, uh, kind of curious. Um, we're in a sharing economy. That's something that comes up. A sharing economy. Very often. Okay. We rent out our homes. We pick people up and drive them across oh. town in our cars. Okay. And that's something people should be aware of. Homeowners and auto insurance does not always cover your car when you're acting as a taxi or a hotel. 
um, people should read their policy before they decide to rent out their car or their or even their RV. You can rent an RV right. which, that belongs to somebody else for a weekend. And people should read their insurance policies and see if they'd have coverage. Does that also apply if uh, w when you first started saying that, I thought maybe you were going in the direction of being, uh, let's say, an, an Uber driver. Does, does that apply to something like that, too, when you're, you're, you, you, when you're using your own private vehicle as a, well, I guess, profit center outside of day-to-day Going, going to and from work and, and maybe using your work. I use my vehicle to make sales calls, but that's not quite the same thing, is it? It's not quite the same thing as picking up another human and taking them from one yeah. spot to another. And there is definitely, it is something you should talk to your insurance agent about to make sure you have coverage for. Okay. And uh, I, I wanted to get back to about, uh, we were talking earlier in the program about Oh, the, the the value of the home, the the acreage, things like that that can affect uh, well the price of a, a policy or or your insurance program, and I suppose that that you're you're also talking about you mentioned this a little bit, but but not only the 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 structure itself, the interior of the, of the place, but but also oh your your yard, your land, uh, things like that need to come into play, especially if you have a little bit of acreage. Because, well, what if somebody walks into my property, they're not supposed to be there, but they walked into my property and they stepped in a gopher hole and now they're going to try to, uh, you know, take me to court because they hurt their ankle. Yeah. Um, so it is Montana. You know, anytime you get out of the city, someone could have, you know, half an acre, they could have 30 acres. So it's, uh, you know, identifying, you know, okay, I've, I've insured the house. That's fine. What kind of outbuildings do they have? Um, you know, automatically on a homeowner's policy, usually 10% of the cover J is going to extend to the outbuildings. You know, if they have large shops or pole barns or, you know, you even see riding arenas are very, very co fairly common down the Bitterit, um, you know, it's making sure that those are covered correctly. Yeah. Um, you know, another big thing, I guess, to take into consideration, too, is, you know, how many animals do you have? You know, typical homeowner's policy is going to usually allow for a horse or two per person. Um, but if you have, you know, five horses or if you're boarding horses or if you're breeding horses, those could all be, you know, exclusions on a homeowner's policy. Erica, how, how does Montana do in terms of people that uh, are, are insured or if they're not, they, they should be? Are we are we pretty good about it? Are we somewhere in the middle? Are we lousy? It could do a lot better. Where, where, do, you, where do you think Montana stacks up in, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, being uh, responsible in insurance Policyholders. I don't know. The, I haven't seen a recent statistic. Yeah. My statistics would be just over a year old, but about 17% of drivers on the road do not have insurance. And even if you do have auto insurance, the state minimum limit is $25,000. So if you had an accident with somebody with $25,000 in limits, that is supposed to cover your medical bills and your loss of income and your change in your life. And it might not be enough. <laughs> Wow, seventeen percent. That that sounds really high to me. Does that stack up nationally somewhere? There's a few states that are way better than that, but we're right in the mix of average. Okay, yeah. all right, kind of right in the middle of the middle of the pack there on that one. Uh, Justin, uh, let me let me ask you. Well, branch out just a couple minutes here. We wanted to stay with um, mainly with homeowner stuff because uh, it is Missoula real estate today. But some of the other uh, insurance policies that that you mentioned earlier in the show that that you are you know, qualified to write up, but, but what are some of the other types of policies that you do a lot of? Um, so obviously home and auto. So any re recreational vehicle, so four wheelers, snowmobiles, um, you know, uh, what are those side by sides? Sure. We see a lot of those, um, we see a lot of manufactured homes. I think that probably covers it yeah. for the most. What's that? Term life. Oh, and yeah, and life insurance too. We read a lot of term life. Um, when it does get more complicated, we do have um, people that focus solely on life insurance. And, yeah, and that that we'll pass that along too. And there's there's term life, and is there still is there whole life? Is there there a different? What what is what is the difference between the two? A term life policy is a set dollar amount for a set number of years, where a permanent life policy stays in place till just after the age one hundred, and it varies somewhere between one hundred and one hundred and ten depending on the company, but you would pay premiums in your whole life. Um, a lot of times you can borrow against that amount that you've paid in after time. So you kind of have a little savings account mm -hmm. there too. And then there's also long-term care, which would help um, 
with a nursing home or disability insurance. So if you got hurt um, and were unable to work, you might want to think about a disability policy. And on a term life policy, something that a lot of people end up doing is um, husband and wife might both get a term policy to cover the balance of a mortgage when they take one out so that if something did happen, the other person would be able to stay in the home. Yeah. No, that makes no, that makes a lot of sense. What um, we got a few minutes left in the program here. But we should let you talk a little bit about um, Payne West's successful track record and and why we should go with you. This is this is your campaign stump right here. We'll get started with you, Justin. What do you think? Um, yeah. So I just think it's um, you know we so in our personal lines department we work as a team. So we have a group of about ten of us. Um, so just knowing that you know if one of us out of the office or one's on vacation that you you have a team that you're working with um you know you're always going to be able to get a hold of someone you're always going to be able to get an answer um you know we problem solve really well together um so you know finding the right fit is very important and i feel like we do a really good job at that erica anything to add to that um i think that our footprint in washington oregon idaho and montana where we have close to 30 offices is a huge advantage if you happen to realize you left town without your auto ID card, you could walk into our office in Portland, Oregon, and they could print one out for you. That's a good one. Yeah. Well, uh, any anything that, that we missed that you'd like to cover here in the last couple minutes? Did we? Uh... Yeah, I guess going back to, uh, you know, we're talking about other types of policies that we do. So we also do a lot of uh, course construction or builder's risk policies. Okay. So, you know, so that's when someone buys a piece of land and they're going to start building from the ground up. Um, so a course of construction or a builder's risk policy is different than a homeowner's policy. It's going to cover, um, basically everything, but the liability while it's being built and that liability is going to be carried usually by the contractor. So those are fairly common in Montana. A lot of people are, you know, moving to the outskirts of town down the bitter and, you know, a Potomac mm -hmm. and they're building new, new houses. So just knowing that we have the ability to do that, I think is a advantage for us as well. You probably had to adapt a little bit in that respect, haven't you? Is, uh, the, the further people start to move out into not necessarily off the grid, but the further out they go, that probably introduces some new challenges to you. There's challenges um, within insurance anytime you're a distance away from a fire department, whether it's on a home policy or on a builder's risk policy. Um, wildfire comes up a lot. They want to know that someone would be there to put the house out, the fire out if the fire was coming there or with wildfire right. that it is not in a heavily forested area. All right, all right. Well, let's do a radio roadmap. Let's start with location. Where is the uh, the Payne West office located? So it's on uh, Palmer Street, uh, right across from Pacific Recycling and Steel. Um, it's kind of the street that goes in between Target and Albertsons out on North Reserve. Okay, all right. And you've been out there how long? How long has the office been there? That office was the Western States office, right. and it's been there a long time. It was actually two separate buildings, and about five years ago, we joined those two buildings together. So it's one large building now. Okay. All right. Okay. Individual contact information. Erica, we'll start with you. We've got Erica Close and Justin Montelius from Payne West Insurance. Uh, folks want to get a hold of you, Erica, because uh, you, you beat Justin today on Missoula Real Estate Today. You outpointed him. Uh, according to the judges, um, how would they get a hold of you? You can reach me at my direct line, 406-327-6587. Or you can also email me at e as an echo close at painwest.com. All right, Justin, your turn. How about you? All right, my direct line is uh, 327 6591, and my email address is jmontelius at painwest.com. Okay. Uh, do you do both of you, uh, you go out in the field a lot? Do you, uh, do you stay pretty close to, to home, or, or, or do you have to kind of get out there uh, uh, and see what, uh, what it is you're insuring? A large part of Justin's and our job is to make sure that we can meet our clients and answer their questions. We do often go to homes. Um, a very large part of our job, too, is community involvement. So yeah. you'll probably find us sitting at different charity events or serving on nonprofit boards in town, too. All right. Well, it's been a pleasure having you both here. Really enjoyed it and continued success at Payne West. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks, Teddy. Thank you for listening to Missoula Real Estate Today. We hope you found this morning's information to be helpful. If you have any suggested topics for any future Missoula Real Estate Today programs or any questions about buying or selling, contact Diane Beck with Windermere Real Estate. Email dianebeck at realtor.com or visit our website, move to missoula.com. That's move, the number two, missoula.com. We'll see you next time on Missoula Real Estate Today.